Clone Army Death Cult is a build that utilizes the massive pop growth that we get from the Clone Army origin, alongside being able to sacrifice these extra pops with a Death Cult Civic. I can't take it anymore! I just wanna die! This build is really good for year 30 peacetimer games, since you maximize in research and resource production by this year, allowing us to get a very big fleet. I'm going to run through the empire design, the tradition pick order, the different researches to go for, and the build order. For our empire design, we want to go for militarist and fanatic spiritualist as our ethics, picking Megacorp as our authority type. This is because even though we might not put any branch offices in other planets, we do get a lot of benefit from going Megacorp due to the increased unity output from the authority type. Later on in the game, we will usually unlock the third civic point before year 30 with this build, which will allow us to reform our government into either an oligarchic or dictatorial government type and select the Distinguished Admirality civic as our third civic. For our origin, of course we want to go Clone Army, and lastly for our traits, we want to go with Intelligent, Charismatic, Natural Sociologists, and then Unruly and Deviants. For our traditions, we want to start off by going Prosperity, picking a point on the right for build cost reduction, then going to the left for specialist resource output. Finishing the tree, we pick our first ascension perk, in this case I like going Executive Vigor, to activate both energy subsidies and mining subsidies at the same time. After this, we dip a bit into Discovery to select the point over to the right which lets us have more research alternatives. This is very important, since we benefit a lot from being able to roll psionics early on, and this will help us do that. After dipping into Discovery a bit, we start Supremacy to be able to finish this before year 30, and if we do finish researching Psionics before year 30, we can go Mind Over Matter and start the Psionic tree. For our technologies, before year 10 we want to focus on research that increases our resource output and also unlocks further research that we need afterwards. I recommend V-Lining for global energy management, hydroponics farming, and geothermal fracking, as well as other technologies that are shown on the screen. After the first 10 years, start trying to go for other technologies that will unlock further alley output alongside psionic theory and also other exotic resource output. I'm going to list recommended technologies down here. As for weapons for ship designs, I've talked about the different weapons for ship designs in a different video. You should go check that out if you want to know what technologies to research for your ships. Start off by buying 52 minerals a month, building a sign ship, setting your economy to civilian economy, and if you're not a megacorp, set your diplomatic stance to isolationist. Also set your species living standard to social welfare. This is because we have such a high species growth rate that a lot of pups are going to be unemployed. And in order to increase stability and also get some unity output out of the pups, social welfare is the best living standard aside from utopian abundance that we have available to us. After the first month passes by, activate the sacrifice harmony edict. This will give happiness to all of our pups and will make it so we don't have to worry about amenities to keep them happy. Also activate the edict that increases output from priests. Build a clone vault on your capital and start building mineral districts as soon as possible. You want to build at least 6 mineral districts because you're going to build a lot of buildings on the other planets. You also should have enough unity to be able to start rolling for different leaders. I recommend rolling for an Architectural Interest Governor, alongside a Particles Physicist to roll Chemical Modes a lot earlier, a Maniacal Society Researcher to be able to roll Psionics, and lastly, either a Materials, a Boycraft, or a Proportion Leader for Engineering. You might need to buy 13 allies a month for a bit to be able to build your first colony ships. After the first 3-4 years, there should be a dig site that appears in your capital. You should go with a scientist and start digging this site as soon as possible. The sooner you finish it, if you plan to ascend, the better. After you're done building the six mineral districts in your capital, start building research labs. You want to spam research labs in your capital until it's pretty much filled up. On the other planets, start off by building a clone vat first, and on the biggest planet, start spamming industrial districts, while in the smaller planet, build a city district, and in the free building slot that you get, start building a sacrificial temple. You want to have one sacrificial temple per planet this should be enough to give you around 30 to 40% happiness, which is basically what we need to get our pups to 100% happiness. While you're doing this, start building star bases in order to build hydroponic farms. You need around 6 hydroponic farms in order to sustain your population. You can sell excess food if you need to, but I recommend stockpiling a little bit, since later on before year 30, you'll have 90 pups, more or less, and this food will be useful then. Around the time you almost filled up your home planet with research labs, you should be able to have mineral purification plants unlocked that you can't put down on your planet. 
In your consumer goods planet, you probably have a free building site already. You want to destroy your clone vat in your capital and build another one in your consumer goods planet. Even if you don't move pubs from your main planet to the other planets, your pubs grow way faster in your consumer goods planet than they actually die in your main planet, so it's still worth it to do this. As you reach around 14,000 consumer goods stockpiled, you want to switch your consumer goods planet over to an ally focused one. Keep building industrial districts in this planet. If you want, you can also build a bit of research if you have too many pubs available. While in the other planet, keep building research and also build moats, gases, and crystals. In your main planet, even though you're probably limited by the amount of pubs you have, you should start building energy districts. Because even though your pubs will not be working on these, later on by year 30, you can switch your pubs from working for minerals over to working in energy to support your fleet. Don't forget to research the bio decipher in order to finish the special project you get from finishing the dig site for clone army. And also don't forget to unlock the fullest potential to be able to get the max output from this build. By year 26, you should have enough allies to start building your fleet. Try to roll for the retired fleet officer governor and also try to have at least four shipyards to start building your ships. Even though you might not have all of the technology researched, you should at least start building them so that by year 30 you can also upgrade them if you need to. Don't forget to ship queue them so they aren't actually built until you need them to be built. Around year 30 your ships should be built, in this case I got around 34,000 fleet power, even though I've seen people manage to get around 60,000 fleet power going death Cold clone army. You should also aim to have 600 or more research output by year 30 with this build. The main downside with this build is that even though year 30 is probably one of the strongest builds in a game, you rely on actually taking over someone or getting a migration treaty in order to be able to scale more, since if you don't do this, you're limited to your 100 pops. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to play PvP games with me or other players, feel free to join the WSC.GG Discord. We play games daily and weekly there. Also, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos. Bye bye!